complain about high prices rising all the time, right? Well, you can hardly blame the seller or service provider for transferring costs to customers. We're all in business to make the profit that enables us keep body and soul together. As a matter of fact, only the monks amongst us would swear off creature comforts like nice cars, homes, exotic vacations, clothes, and all such. Today's episode of The Shipper is all about how Shippers Council is working to ensure that your enjoyment of life quotient is higher. Stay with us. Nigerian Shippers Council Day to serve you well. No matter the problem, we go solve them for you. Yes, so the Nigerian Shippers Council they feel in a parole now for every level. And as soon as goods they move from port A, go enter port B with a measure within on a needle. For the Nigerian Shippers Council, we don't shop proper to fit here you well, work with you well, and help you fit serve your customers them better, no matter where them day. As we country port economic regulator, the Nigerian Shippers Council get every every now to fit make government consider the problem when she pass them the face visit with office phone number four or to buy your daily show your daily lane a papa email us for nsc at shipperscouncil.gov.ng we website now www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng nigeria shippers council with a meet now for the port of an name welcome back my name is rekia zikru yaguyaju you're watching The Shipper, Nigeria's flagship maritime program on television. Thanks for joining us. Last week, we brought you Detention and Demerage 101. For the liability on the container, they not fall on the top of They delay the process of returning the containers. That is why when you are traveling on a Nigerian road today, you will meet a lot of trucks in some villages packed, relaxing, enjoying themselves with containers behind their trucks. They don't even know that they are causing a lot of cost on the businessman that gave them the contract to return the continent. So I don't see how a reasonable shipping company will benefit from delaying the equipment it's using to service its customer. We're now able, you know, to have a cargo clearing process that is one, transparent, that is efficient, and that actually enables for the industry to be able to work in a much better, efficient manner. For more on Demerage and Detention 102, let's join Lucy Nyambi for details of the efforts Nigeria's port economic regulator, Nigerian Shippers Council, is making to put more money in your pockets. To avoid the pitfalls of the charges of demerage and detention, shippers must ensure they start the process of clearing consignments before cargo arrival. This process can actually begin as soon as the manifest is approved. Similarly, logistics for offloading, warehousing and return of containers to off-dock terminals by shippers must be properly scheduled to avoid unnecessary delays which could lead to incurring demurrage and detention charges. To better understand the issues surrounding demurrage and detention, some stakeholders spoke on their experience with shipping and terminal operators on the payment of demurrage and detention charges, the challenges they have encountered with the shipping companies, and how Shippers Council assisted them. Mr. Victor Okereke, a freight forwarder, tells us his experience with demurrage and detention and why they often have such cases. Sometimes shipping companies, their server is bad. For example, if it takes three days for their server to be good, and you know each one by 40 footer container, the demolage is 18,500. So if it takes three days, it means 18,500 multiplied by three days. Now if it is 1,000 containers, you will not find out the aggregate consequences to the society is too much. Remember, if they calculate demolage, they also calculate VAT, and VAT is 7% of any demolage you pay. When they say they don't have network, we cannot assess if you submit document for the person to get his beer, because there are a certain amount of money we pay to shipping companies. And once they say their server is bad, they cannot print the beer for the person to pay. And this is how demolage comes in. And if it is 1,000 container, for example, the shipping company comes in with. So when you now calculate the amount of uh, millions it, is, uh, it involves, it, it is not good for the society. One of those things they were doing is to submit manifest on time. But presently, sometimes we go to customs 
Nigerian customs to see what we can do. They enable us to start the job before the arrival of the vessel. When we go a week or two weeks before then, they will not have manifest. And some of these things also lead to dumorages. Because when customs don't have manifest, there is no way uh, they will allow us to do any job. As a result of that, container comes, eh? and then they will, mad, they will mad rush by clearing agents in order to do their work. And that also leads to quarry and also do more edges. Most of the time, shipping company gives the ETA expected time of arrival of vessel. When they give it, we'll be working towards that. Most of the time, they will now send information and say, they may not even send information. When we struggle to get access to their server, to their portal, a shipping company's portal, we now discover that they had changed uh, expected time of uh, arrival. And the same expected time of arrival they changed, they will give another date that it, it will arrive. But if you not arrive the same date, they will come up with another one. And uh, sometimes, instead of coming, assuming today is cyst, and instead of this thing to come on cyst, before they gave us cyst, and we are working towards cyst, and we may not go again to go and check their system, you will discover that the thing came, maybe on third. Remember that because we prepared for cyst, and the container came on third. It means that leads another demolage. So it is not all that uh, good for us. Some shipping company will tell you they are discharging their cargo at the ICT. Now, when it is two days before the arrival of the container, some of us must have done our custom session, believing that the container will drop at TICT. When we go to assess the bit uh, note, how much we pay to shipping company, we now discover that the container was now transferred to Square. And uh, sometimes they don't transfer the same container. When they say TICT, they will keep it at the ship site. Within the period, after three days, we pay for terminal demolage, we also pay for shipping company demolage. Because some of us start something before the arrival of uh, vessels. And sometimes some shippers don't hear English. Then some shippers will now say, okay, I'll find somebody who will reinterpret for me. And uh, maybe when you call, the importer calls the shipping agent, he will say, no, 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 I, I, me, I don't understand English. As I don't understand English, you wait, I'll find somebody. You call again, the person will keep on maybe three, four, five days before we now find somebody who can now interpret that so, so, so thing is supposed to be there and he need to initiate amendment. So on this process, some importers will say, I have paid you. The agent say, you paid me, not for this uh, problem. So it brings problem between agent and importer, and as a result of that, the cargo will lie down until that issue is uh, resolved. Nigeria's ports on a daily basis receive high volume of cargo from different countries in the world, which call for instant clearance to be able to accommodate the burden of vessels and discharge of cargoes. In shipping, you must be able to track your cargo. And how do you, can you track your cargo? It's with the shipping lines. The, the moment you initiate that process of importation, you should not lose track. You should be able to have communication with the shipper. You'll be able to tell you, these are the time that the cargo has been loaded. And this estimate we are talking about is for you to also prepare. It's a window for you to now begin to say, okay, let me plan, even if it comes before 6th, if you have planned ahead, you should be able to meet up. So you should not wait until probably on the 6th exactly before you start finding out. You should be able to go on their website, check your content, because the container has numbers and your bill of lady will have all those numbers that you can track. On your own, you can go to their website and begin to track. And this ETA, as you keep tracking it and it's moving, you'll be able to now, like, know that, oh, this cargo that was supposed to uh, arrive on the 6th, probably not going to arrive on the 3rd. So you, you won't be caught out on the west. But when you fail to plan and fail to track those things, that's where you now cough, you are now caught off guard. And when it now comes, you're now running, you know, up and down to see if you can meet up. Ensure that whenever you are importing, 
you must carry all those that are involved in moving these containers, educate them properly. For example, the freight forwarders will know that once this container arrives, they must clear it and move it from the port at, within those three days. And then when taken out and offloaded, giving to the truck owners to return to, to the designated terminals, they should educate them that this thing also works with time. So they should ensure that they take those containers immediately to those de designated terminals and giving a proof or a receipt or what we call the uh, container equipment exchange card, which is now a proof that you've returned the container. So there's no more detention charge on that container. For the dumerage, you don't have a dumerage. So at the end of the day, you find out that you've managed how you've reduced your costs. But once these containers are not returned, if it takes three months to return, the detention will count for three months. And that is where most of the consignees have problems. In returning them, they find out that our costs have accrued so much on that empty, sometimes it runs into millions. And that is when they now come back to say waivers. So the agents should educate the truck drivers appropriately that this is very key and important in the cycle in the uh, container management, that it must be returned back to the shipping companies. And the only evidence they have is that equipment interchange receipts, which says it has been returned. And so demurrage, uh, detention charge on it uh, stops or is, there's not even any detention charge. The Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of Nigerian Shippers Council spoke on cargo abandonment and how it contributes to demurrage and detention. People may feel that how much is the container deposit? And then if you look at the value of a container, maybe it might make you know, some disingenuous business sense you know, to then say, well, I think I value keeping this container than actually you know, requiring that I assess a deposit that I paid, which is the reason why you know, the shipping companies and the terminal operators have continued to argue that because of the reason, that particular reason, why people want to take advantage is believing that the value of the container vis-a-vis -vis the deposit that has been paid does not match up. That is the reason why detention then becomes a tool that's available. Because by detention, the implication of detention simply is that if, for instance, a shipper has taken a particular container uh, and has refused to return it, by the time another consignment of his arrives at that particular port, the terminal or the shipping company may now hold on to the new consignment as a detention until the return of his previous empty container. That, that is supposed to be a balancing effect, and either ways, it doesn't really work effectively for the industry, for anybody to engage in that kind of conduct. You know? So we would like to discourage people in conducting themselves in that kind of manner, because not only is it mischievous, but like I said, ultimately, it does impact negatively on the economic matrix in a way you know, that does not do justice and bring in a, an effective running uh, of the you know, container regime. He also explains what Shippers Council is doing to manage demurrage and detention. Part of our mandate also is sensitization. You know, the fact of the matter is that a lot of people really sometimes do not even know that actually the documents that they sign as far as containerization requires a return of these containers. So when we engage in the public sensitization, one of the things we do is to enable the shipping community to be aware that there are obligations to which you have appended your signature in the course of doing your business in our port. One of which is that when you take away a container, you have to return it. I would think that it is really possible that some of the individuals who are holding onto containers actually do not even recognize that there is an obligation on them you know, to return this. So what we do in the course of our public enlightenment campaigns and the sensitization, particularly by our consumer affairs uh, department, you know, is to put forward an enlightenment campaign that enables people to clearly understand that there are uh, obligations as far as uh, this particular matter of the return of containers 
uh, is concerned. Today, the Nigerian Shippers Council has been given the implementation of the International Cargo Tracking Note. International Cargo Tracking Note has a lot of benefits, one of which is it now provides at once, you know, the clarity in the industry uh, to be able to function in a way that uh, right from the port of origin to port of destination, we have available in our system, you know, through the International Cargo Tracking Note, the tools that will enable, I mean, cargo owners to be able to trace the movement of their cargo from the port of origin to any port of destination here in Nigeria. Uh, what that does is that it now allows you, even before a vessel has bettered in our waters, to be able to undertake the processing that you don't have to wait until that ship has bettered before you can then you know, proceed uh, to processing you know, the clearance of your, of, of, of your cargo. We take it that we are sufficiently educated about one aspect of how prices keep mounting. As we always say on the shipper, each and every one of us has a role to play in ensuring that life is more comfortable for the next person to us. It is in our enlightened self-interest. It's now time to join Abike Idomu on Tidbits. Nigeria's maritime industry has evolved over the years with various maritime experts initiating and contributing to the growth and development of that sector. One of such noble individuals was barrister Mrs. Margaret Onyema Orakusi. Mrs. Orakusi, who was a member of the governing board of the council, passed away after a brief illness and was laid to rest in Lagos following a funeral service at the Church of Assumption in Ikoi. Mrs. Orakusi was president of the Nigerian Trawlers Owners Association, NITWA, chairman of the annual Nigeria International Maritime Exhibition and Conference, NIMAREX, and chairman of the Ship Owners Forum. She also served on the board of the Nigeria International Maritime Summit, NIMS, and as a trustee of the Women in Logistics and Transport, WILAT, Nigeria. Distinguished personalities, friends and family gathered at the church were present to pay their last respects to the distinguished maritime mogul. Alhaji Samaila Abdullahi, the outgoing chairman of the council's governing board, acknowledged Orakusi's significant contributions to the board and the council. Good friend, a sister and a guide. She was a member of our board twice and she has been the one guiding the operations of, of the board because she has the experience. She was a very generous woman. She was an excellent person, full of humility and respect. Certainly we used to call her the Iron Lady, the Margaret Thatcher of our board because of her firmness, discipline and support. The Executive Secretary and CEO of the Council, Right Honorable Emmanuel Jimmy, described Orakusi as an esteemed figure in the maritime industry. Not only did I have that personal relationship with her, but she was now like somebody who was carrying me on her shoulders, teaching me pretty much on the job, and also creating for me a buffer and making it possible for me to work seamlessly with the board of the Nigerian Shippers Council. And so that, to me, is the extent to which this loss is personal. So I take it he was always one who was there to spearhead, uh, to be an advocate, to be very, very strong in, you know, putting a position that said the Nigerian Shippers Council must be given its pride of place and allowed, you know, to be able to function effectively. So my personal loss, and also the Shippers Council has lost, you know, um, a strong voice. I want to go further to say that as far as the maritime space is concerned, now this represents the second tragedy within a very short period of time. We know not too long ago we lost Otumba Kunle Folarin. Uh, now Ms. Margaret Rakosi. These were voices that if you got into a conversation about the direction that the maritime space in this country should be moving, you needed to listen to them because they were always there available to advise and to be like, uh, you know, as they were very knowledgeable about the issues. So um, every single time when you had a problem, you could just simply run to them and then you're able to get uh, the, you know, sort of advisement that will allow you 
and enable you to take the decisions that were very well informed. You know, so I, I think for me, the industry really, really, as of today, you know, will have to be, um, we have to say that this is a terrible, terrible tragedy that's happened as far as the maritime space is concerned. The show of love and appreciation for the late Amazon continued at the burial as friends and family members paid glowing tributes to the departed, wishing our soul eternal rest. Had a, a medal for ensuring that everybody around her was happy. So her smile was extravagantly infectious. That whenever she comes in your presence, she will bring her uh, extravagant, uncommon smile that will just make you happy. I'm still looking for another woman that can fill her space. It's going to be very difficult. She will do everything effortlessly without making a noise. She was an achiever. She will forever make you smile when you go to her with heavy tears. I'll miss her because she was my everything. She was my mentor, she was my role model. She was always encouraging me. Things to different women, to different people. But to me, Margaret was actually was more than a friend. She was a sister, a sister that I never had. I had, she had my back at all times. Very dependable woman, a woman you can rely on on anything, a woman you can just call at any time of the day, at night, and she will be there to support you for anything. Anything you, you wanted her to do, she will do. I cannot talk enough about her. May her soul rest in peace. We strongly encourage stakeholders in the maritime sector to visit our website, www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng to access detailed information about our services and report any complaints they may have. Let's now examine our complaints register. During the week of 19th to 25th June 2023, we received a total of 10 complaints and all of them are ongoing investigations. These complaints include unjustifiable charges, fraudulent activities, illegal fees, persistent blocking, frequent interference, and container lien. It's time for global shipping news. World Fuel Services will establish new bunkering services in Jamaica, working with Scott Petroleum, a leading distributor of petroleum products and services throughout the Caribbean. World Fuel Services has been a leader in marine fuel trading and brokering for over three decades. With a proven track record of delivering high-quality fuel and exceptional customer service to the marine industry worldwide, World Fuel Services has amassed a huge body of expertise and connections in more than 1,400 seaports around the world. On the other hand, with over 20 years of experience, Scott's Petroleum Limited is well known to all players in the region for its exceptional service in physical bunker supply in Jamaica and has built an unparalleled reputation for reliability, safety and efficiency. And that's it for Titbits for this week. See you next time. The Nigerian Shippers Council is now better poised with responsive systems in place to help you and other shippers get seamless, stress-free transition for your clients' goods from point A to B. Today at the Nigerian Shippers Council, timeliness, orderliness, transparency and efficiency is all we care about. Put your complaint through to our helpline. Visit us at number 4, Ayodile Shoyode Lane at Papa Lagos or reach us on www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the point of your needs. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the port of your needs. This is where we round up our package on The Shipper this week. Until we come your way again next week with another exciting episode of The Shipper, do have a swimmingly great week ahead. Mm -hmm.